Even at a cocktail party, a certain amount of formality is inevitable. But the crowds in the streets have no such inhibitions. They've got a new independence to celebrate, and they celebrate it, pausing to greet their visitors as they go by. The British, too, can contribute their share of noise and colour to a celebration when they want to. And the Scots Guards do just that for the big independence tattoo in Kololo Stadium. This is the climax of all these days of rejoicing, because here, at midnight, Uganda's independence will formally begin. Midnight, Sergeant Major Sidney Small of Birmingham lowers the Union Jack that has flown in Uganda for nearly 70 years. At the same moment, the 4th Battalion King's African Rifles becomes the 1st Battalion Uganda Rifles. And to replace the Union Jack, the black, gold and red flag of the new young state, Uganda is born again, free and independent. Next day is a public holiday, and by the time the Duke and Duchess return to the Kololo Stadium for the daylight celebrations, the Governor-General and the Prime Minister have been sworn in in their new roles. The Duke of Kent speaks to the people of Uganda, bringing a message of goodwill and congratulations from his cousin, the Queen. Not in any sense a goodbye, for Uganda has asked to be and has been accepted as a full member of the Commonwealth, of which the Queen is head. Next morning, the Duke and Duchess arrive at Parliament House for the state opening of Parliament. Uganda's first Legislative Council met 41 years ago and has grown larger and more representative ever since. From now on, its power is supreme. Good luck to a new country, a new member of the Commonwealth, a new member of the growing community of African peoples. Britain has come a long way with you and wishes you well. <laughs>